Hey everybody, if you're all caught up from last week and you don't want to watch the recap, go ahead and skip to this timestamp in the video. Otherwise, enjoy the show. Previously on Pokemon Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah, we, we yeah. all we yes. all met up and had a conversation about what we did uh, individually and um, they're all really cool things, so make sure you watch those videos. Um, but important potential plot information happened during my session. Um, and I'm going to do a little info dump right now about exactly what went down. So in my time at the Rite of Learning, um, I brought out Growl and asked Dr. Lawson about um, potentially learning how to do dark type moves. And he was hesitant to teach saying some sort of line along, like, if you do that, they could lose themselves or something like that. And it triggered in me the question to ask about the war. And I was basically just like, do you know anything about the war? And he was like, yep, I do. And I'm like, okay, tell me. And he was like, um, no, your crowd's gonna have to do a good job if you wanna, if you wanna learn this information. Um, thankfully, crowd did a great job. Uh, and after I told him a little bit about what we experienced in Xantha, he gave me basically the history of the War of the Architects. Um, so it all started with a pack of Abra that lived north of Greengate. Uh, There's just a wild expanse of forest up there, and it's said that that is where both the psychic and dark source stones exist. <clears throat> um, in this tribe of Abra, there were um, some that were interested in branching out, but um, one day, this one Abra came into contact with the psychic source stone and really found it imperative after that point to branch out and gain more power just to go see what was out there. Um, and in doing so, uh, ran into people, and naturally since we have capture systems, Pokeballs, people captured some of his friends, so they were treated back. He was very pissed, um, angry that he lost friends and family, um, and decided that it was necessary to use the Source Stone in order to grow in power um, and evolved into a Kadabra, um, and was training his little family and group of Abras to do the same, and some of them also evolved to Kadabra. Um, and then continuing to branch out over time, they found a pack of dark type Pokemon, who are also in the wilds up north, um, and there was a huge battle between them. Um, lots of losses on both sides, um, but in the end, uh, that Abra who evolved into the Kadabra found the Dark Source Stone um, and evolved into an Alakazam and is what people believe is the prime, prime mind. Um, and he is all disfigured and stuff. He's got multiple arms that normal Alakazams don't have. Some of them are all burned up and charred and black and disfigured. And he's basically like a beast monster Alakazam. Um, and from there, he kind of joined the two forces of Pokemon because he was super powerful. Um, the dark and the psychic ones? Yeah. Um, and went out into the world, and that's when the war started to um, happen. Uh, basically, outside of that, he told me that the generation in which it happened in, um, it seems like they understand that they had a lot of wrongdoing on their side, as well as there was wrongdoing on the Pokemon side too, but they weren't proud of what happened and they lost a ton. So people that are older don't talk about it. Like it's just like a known thing, they're not willing to, they won't. Um, which is probably why Lillian won't give up any information about it. Um, <clears throat> Cause she knows stuff, but won't talk about it. And he says that it's probably better in those cases to just not talk about that with those people because it could cause negative friction um, but he was very helpful gave a ton of information 
And now we know that the Prime Mind is this super crazy, disfigured, intense Alakazam. And to their knowledge, it's still alive? Yeah. He kind of... There was, like, warring happening, and I think he may have realized that it wasn't going to go their way and just disengaged, yes. and nobody really knows where he is. The only thing I'm going to add, because it's <clears throat> pertinent, and it might just be lost in translation, um, after the Prime Mind lost some of his friends, he brought a Pokeball back into the woods and reverse engineered it to capture people. Whoa! Yes. So that is that also did happen. I forgot about that because that's pretty key. One hundred percent. That's important. I totally forgot that too. (laughs) That's the scariest part. (laughs) Yes. And that, so I was kind of waiting for it, and you were like, and that's it. And I went, yeah. well, no, really that's more. So Bury the leaves there. I forgot yeah. about that. Yes, so, they, so the prime mind, <clears throat> as far as Dr. Lawson oh. is aware, we're gonna um, walk is into, still like, within possession of the ability to capture a human being in the same way that humans capture Pokemon. Yes. Yeah, if he hasn't like figured out a way to mass manufacture these things. Question. Just start throwing balls at people. If you know this or if he forgot it, mm-hmm. um, if you it. catch a human being, like if you catch a Pokemon, they kind of just are on your side. Go, Dan! Yeah. Does Dan do what you, you tell Dan, him? Dan, use do? kick! Yeah. All right. Does it happen? I didn't ask that question. Okay. Yeah. Also, if you're being. There were. Okay, here's what happened, really. I, after he gave me all of this information, I was literally just like, this is. I'm the worst person to get this right now. Like, I don't know what to ask. I, we're gonna have to come back. <laughs> <laughs> tell me what you told my for real. Tell my friends what you told me. I, I, can, I mean, the best. To, I'm gonna bring my friends back. <laughs> to your question, it seems like that <clears throat> hasn't happened yet. That we know of. That we know maybe. of. He maybe could have a homeless guy. Maybe that's part of the reason. <laughs> like, just to I mean, test, a to test it out. Someone that nobody will miss. Yeah, maybe test it out. Maybe that's part of the reason why he older people don't want to talk about it. Maybe that happened a lot. And like there were people I mean, maybe, that were fighting them. Because I'm just thinking like he did it to Javier and just like controlled him. Like there's no reason he couldn't have put it in that technology. I mean, I have no idea. But then it's like, can you literally can you trust anybody? Well <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I as know. as terrifying as the like Pokeball reverse engineering is, uh-huh. we already have seen that Cause was able to like at least psychically overtake Correct. one or many people Correct. to puppet them to his whim. Hundred percent. Which arguably would be scarier than a, a, a Dan Ball. Are you sure about that? I'm just saying. I mean, like, they're both terrifying. <laughs> no question. But what happens if you get deatomized? Yeah. Do you come back? I, I feel like it's scarier if they're just like straight up controlling because they could straight up control anybody. At least with the Pokeball thing, it's like they would have to like have an action to make that happen. This or, literally changes everything. Use oh, punch. it completely does. It <laughs> it changed a significant amount for CJ in that CJ was just gonna go into the, like the lake and go and like make crash like bite the source stone just to see what would happen and now he's like no that's a really bad idea because those can do some really bad things <laughs> so yeah avoiding that is what dr lawson was like you should probably not he was like okay yeah that's this is how okay yeah welcome to pokemon dungeons and dragons join our heroes phoebe Milo, CJ, Bentley, as they explore the Laris region, learn about their new friends, and discover the world around them. With our heroes back together again, it seems the song of the river has caught their attention. All right, boom! Start right where we left off. You guys all awaken from your slumbers, oh. and you meet up. We'll say we'll say it's like late morning because Bentley had a, a heck of a three a.m. call time. 
had so, a rough night. <laughs> did 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 all of, did all of that happen? Yeah. Yeah. I think that's yeah. so fair. We yeah. now just heard all of this. Yes. Yeah. You oh, guys I are... maybe told us was we went to bed and I had nightmares and no. So this is oh, the next God. morning yeah. and then told so if you... I may have told Milo before bed just to mess so with if you miss the recap you might be a little confused because <laughs> we're trying something a little weird. We did four side missions. Uh, go go definitely go check those out for everybody's perspectives and then the recap will nicely sum up everything that sort of took place, uh, more specifically in the CJ session. But you should still go watch everybody else's. They did a lot of really cool things. Anyways, back to the questions at hand. I don't think I did anything cool anymore. No, <laughs> for real. You touched the Rainmaker. Yeah. You found out all of this stuff. Yeah. And, and befriended a Chikorita. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And I fought Sexy Greg. That, I don't care about Greg anymore. Greg, Greg, was a Greg. Fight. It was Greg a fun fight. Chikorita did some cool stuff. Pop Greg! Greg. <laughs> but yeah, not as important. Greg is peanuts. Oh yeah, not as I'm important. Gonna, I'm going to just delete my session. <laughs> yeah, wow. for real. Wow. Um, just throw it into the trash. Everybody else's sessions laid the groundwork for CJ to learn what he learned. That is pretty He true. would not have learned what he learned had you guys not learned what you learned. There's no way. Anywho's, this completely changes my perspective on the world. Yeah. <laughs> like, for real, though. Because <clears throat> if you think, hey, there's a Kadabra or an Alakazam that could come and just catch you. I mean, maybe he doesn't have that capability. That's probably why it hasn't happened in three Hypothetically, years. Hypothetically, right. he, he can do it. Uh, yeah. Sure. How do you feel about that? I'm not that worried about it currently. I, I'm very worried about it. I'm extremely worried about <laughs> it. It's not going to come find us no, and catch us. I'm just... Yeah, the, the concept, I get it. Yes, 30 years just reverse engineering Pokeballs to catch and people. And Alakazam right. hovers into town. Catch all the people. Hold on, and Alakazam <laughs> comes into town and he looks at you, because that one's pretty cool, and just throws a Pokeball at you and catches you. I wonder what type it is. Yeah, that's basically what I'm thinking now, is that Pokeballs... Seem way more messed up than I thought they were Because now I'm putting originally. them in that situation, and our, now I feel like a monster. Our, yeah. new, our new mission is to become so uncool that nobody would want to catch us. <laughs> 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 oh, it's super weak. Yeah, that was basically, lame. <laughs> that was the, the Prime Mind's motivation was that people can catch Pokemon. Why can't Pokemon catch people? If you're going to do it to us, we're going to do it to you. Because now I want to, like, release my whole team and stick my head in the sand. <laughs> Just, uh, oh, God. <laughs> so, uh, how... If there's anybody that we can trust, how are we going to get them to believe that? Uh, I think most adults know this yeah. is... Well, they case. don't know what we know. They might. You don't know. They didn't battle cause to our knowledge. Sure, but neither did Dr. Lawson, and he knew it. Okay, hold on. I think we need to go talk to Lillian and you need to tell her what happened because that might- I don't think that'll change her mind. Him meeting the Rainmaker? Sure, maybe she'll talk about that. I don't think she'll talk about the war still. Yeah, I mean, you're probably right, but we can still open the door and see what happens. All right. How, Is how, there more stuff that you want to know? We can just go talk to Dr. Lawson again. Well, how, well, how do you think the Rainmaker <laughs> Relates to them. The the, he I don't. Good. He's the open book he here. Really, he really was. You want to go talk to Lily? You might have to kick some me. butt with one of your Pokemon. Like we could do stuff with Pendleton. I was just saying because this is clearly like her one like important life thing that she loves to talk about. And if he describes what happened to him <clears> and it matches up, she might just go. And even if we don't learn stuff about the war and we learn anything else, it might just be something to open her up. I didn't I tell her about so. it when I was there. I don't think so, but okay. I guess you I could have. You take the lead on it. And no, I, he would. I didn't he did it. it. I think it's worth a shot. I mean, worst things, she just stonewalls again. Yeah. Yeah, to my memory, Dr. Lawson did not think that the Rainmaker was a real thing. Yeah, right? that's what he said mm -hmm. to me, too. Yeah, he was like, he's no. He's just like, no, it's people not are, People are crazy. It was just a flood. Yeah. I'm also curious why Lillian would be blind because of the Rainmaker, and you seem fine. You, you can see me, right? I don't, yeah, think, I don't think the two I, things are related. Yeah, I think we we kind of said maybe that was the case, and we're just wrong. Or they are because she saw it do what it did. I thought... If that's what happened. L Lillian told us she a was blind. was Be involved. A what was involved? A role was involved. 
Oh, uh, CJ yeah, laid right. eyes that's on right. the Rainmaker. That's right. A role was involved. Okay. You just save your eyeballs? Yeah. There was, there was, there was okay. a con save. What? Okay, so you had to make sure you didn't go blind. You came back blind to us. I didn't just... think about it because it went fine. I'm like, what happened? He was just like, make a roll. And I was like, it was okay. a. We all need to stop and watch. It was some sort of, it was some sort of save. Happening? I don't remember it what it was. was. It was a charisma <clears throat> check. That's what you was. made a charisma check to save your eyeballs. I didn't know that's what it was. <laughs> He did, he did a lot of things. I don't even know what it was. I was just rolling all over the but <laughs> I was basically stumbling around in the dark swamp. I had like a little bubble of light around me, and that was about it. I was so, just being a wild boy again. Lillian did say that she saw the Rainmaker, and since then she had been blind. Mm-hmm. Can we confirm that she is blind because of the Rainmaker, or we're just putting two and two together, and that might be wrong? Maybe that's why we should go talk to Lillian. All right. I'm for it. I just think if I failed it, I wouldn't be blind. Personally, being in that situation, it was right. just really, really, really cool. <laughs> it didn't seem like <laughs> I was going to die at any point. Going up to it, it did. But once I like saw it, I was like, wow. And it was cool. And he gave me some of his hair. Her, his, uh, either way. Well, you always with the gentleman. You guys want to see the hair? It's pretty cool. Uh, oh, no. Okay. Kind of, upgrades yeah. to my roll. A little bit, I do. <laughs> that, that was kind of cool. I'm going to pull out my badge kit and pop it open. Okay. And pull out one of the hairs. Just a little, little purple hair. Can do an investigation. It's very cold and wet to the touch. Can I smell it? it smells like fresh rain. That's it? Mm-hmm. Is it like greasy or... Hmm. It's just feels condition very, regularly. It's very cool to the touch. Garnier. <laughs> Isn't it the most beautiful purple you've ever seen? Honestly, not Nubster. Okay. I'm gonna have him saw it. Have uh, Nubster make a smell check. Sleuth it, Nubster. Oh, fuck. <laughs> Flack. <laughs> Flack. Flack. He, he gives it a couple sniffs <clears throat> and then is just very excited to be out and about, just sniffing around. Yeah, dude. No, sir. Finds nine <laughs> truffles. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, it's worth a shot. <laughs> like a drug deal. <laughs> it's like an infinity stone. <laughs> All right. That's very weird. So, yeah. do we want to go back to Lillian and see? What do we want to do? I thought we just said. Well, what else did you want to do otherwise? Yeah, is there anything you guys want to do? No. I mean, clearly there's things that I want to do. I would like to soul search. <laughs> <laughs> we can soul search in the bottom of the lake. I don't care. That's fine. <laughs> well, shouldn't... I thought we you were avoiding that, it. You said Dr. Lawson s- yeah, said to would. avoid the, the stones at all costs. Yeah. Yeah. Sure, you so saw, you saw to... what it did to mortar, right? Absolutely. We don't have to go to the stone. Well, that's what I, I know that now. I feel like we sh- maybe shouldn't do that, but... No, we... I, still, I still am very down to find a horsey friend. Um, well, uh, and to just find what was this before the flood happened. Like, I want to see the But we should still tell there. Captain Fry not to go <clears throat> near that stone, right? He's not going to listen to us. Yeah, he, do he doesn't wants. care. He's been trying to do it for years. We, so should at least, once. we should at least warn him. Oh, for sure. We'll have that conversation. All right. Well, I feel like we should talk to Lillian. We should talk to Dr. Lawson. We should warn Captain Fry not to go anywhere near that stone. All right, if we want to... If... Let's go talk to somebody. Is the consensus Dr. Lawson? What do you guys want to do? I just want to talk with somebody. <laughs> yeah. Want to leave food done with somebody? I feel like he told you everything. If you did, if he told you, what else is he going to tell you? I really ask any No, questions. I mean, I've got more questions now after hearing all that and... And I definitely don't have answers to me. Like, I'm ready to go kick the door down. Dr. Lawson, <laughs> you have some explaining to do. Never. Keep talking to Pokemon. <laughs> I want that to happen, so let's do that. Right. Let's do it. <laughs> I told them we were going to go back. I knew you guys were going to have questions. Dr. Lawson, I <laughs> want a word with you, mister. <laughs> yeah. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. So we'll go there. Okay. Let's do it. Okay. You guys make your way back to the, to the right of learning. Chikorita follows you. Sweet. And Crash follows very closely behind her. Nice. I'm gonna pull back everybody else. Okay. It's just the two. 
Um, uh, yeah, I'm gonna fling the door open. Okay. And yell for Dr. Lawson. Dr. Lawson! Your voice, where are you? Your voice echoes in the chamber. Uh, Dr. Lawson appears to be straightening his spectacles in the in the middle of the training arena. Finishing up some notes and talking to Jam. <laughs> and he goes, yeah, hello. Meanwhile, uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna go over to the, the PC and swap Sir Evan Rood for Mortar and then call Mortar out and have Mortar sit on my egg. Because <clears throat> I feel like he. Oh. Roll your bat. Oh, okay. Roll your Please pick for me. Green. <clears throat> Excuse me. Green it shall That's be. That's a bad voice to do. 66. There we go. Easily your highest roll. Much better. Yep. Than many, many. Weeks. Thank you, CJ. It's so good that I need to do math. So I feel like if he gives us information about the source stone, it'd be good for Mortar to be around. Provided he's the one that got. Uh, yeah, as, as Mortar sits on the egg, uh, it starts to vibrate very softly. <clears throat> the egg does. Mm-hmm. Every once in a while, kind of jostles in the in the fluid that it's floating in. Phoebe, check check out the egg. You see it? Yeah, it's like shaking a little bit. It might be close to hatching. Anyway, sorry, Doctor Lawson. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You you keep chatting, but you don't say the so questions. Well, I'm about. sorry, we were checking on his egg. Oh, that is okay. It's a, a nice eggs, you know. Yeah, uh, yeah. You know, we got some uh, we got some questions. Oh, for sure, of course. The CJ, I, said, I told you they would. Yeah, yeah. I was I was warned. Mm-hmm. Do you want to tell what happened to you? The curious minds. Do you want me to tell him about the rainmaker? Uh huh. Okay. I think I met the rainmaker, Doc. Oh yeah, of course. Did you also meet like the boogeyman's and <laughs> You're the, the forest sprites? You know, they come Krampus. I was in the swamp when I met him. Okay, yeah. I don't know what it was. It was just a big blue dog. It had a purple mane mm. and these cool silver ribbon things. CJ, oh, sh- probably sh- like show, him, show him the hairs. Oh yeah, yeah I have hair <laughs> from it. What do you do? <laughs> show him the proof. <laughs> See like these little purple hairs. Okay. Kind of takes it and examines it for a second. He goes. Well, yeah, just very, uh, just, just like holding a strand of rain. Smell it. Yeah, isn't that weird? Yeah, yes. it smells like rain. Hmm. It smells like such as well. Hmm. He hands it back to you. He goes, yeah, I, <clears throat> I believe that you believe you saw the Rainmaker. But you know, the swamp, it, there's all the gases that trick out the light. All these things. I don't know what the hair is, but you know, way of testing it. Things. I do not. Um, the the technology is beyond me here. But perhaps there is somewhere where you could get that tested. Do you know where? I do not, unfortunately. Yeah, he does not. I don't know. Welcome to Inside Check. Yeah, that's what I was going to do. Because that's what that role was to, to test, but just in case. <sighs> and uh, uh, seven. No, ten. Excuse ten. Me. Uh, he does not know. Okay. Um, table that. <laughs> There's a poison lake here? Yeah. It is um, I mean, not necessarily poisonous, but the, the fumes are not healthy to breathe. How did that, how did that happen? It is just uh, the various swamp gases, you know, like the methane, you know, it builds up in the swamp from all the fish. The, the bubbles come up to the surface, they pop the noxious gases, they are not healthy to, to be breathing in in large quantities. You know, it can cause hallucinations, uh, shortness of breath, you can get dizzy. How did, how did that come to be? Like, oh, don't just you... The gases out there? Yeah. It is a natural occurrence, as far as I am been told. I just assumed from the flood it would have been like a newer development. All right, Bentley's gonna sidebar with CJ, just like pull him off to the side and be like, "See, CJ, did, did you hear what he said about the the gases causing hallucinate? Do, do you think that you actually saw what you saw, or yeah, he has um, hairs. I mean, you could have found him in in the mud. Yeah, I don't. I guess you're right. That's you don't believe me, bro. No, I'm just wondering because he said that they cause hallucinations. I just wanted to ask. You said that you saw it, and I believe you. Yeah, no, Were you high? Like, no. No. I mean, no. <laughs> Chikorita's like. <laughs> God. <clears throat> what did the Chikorita give you? No, I, I didn't eat anything. <laughs> it was the Krabby Cakes. <laughs> oh, oh yeah. Interesting. I forgot. 
Chikorita will pose as accurately as it can uh, to the creature that you saw. Yeah, do the... It, will, do it stands kind of majestically and puts its, its head down and kind of waves some vines. Yeah. Um, That's what it looked like. Can, okay. can Leo come paint a description on what he describes? Oh, I suppose yeah. he is much better when he has seen something, but you know, good idea. we can see what happens. Leo so, kind of waddles out. Do you have uh, growl with you? Uh, yeah. You start like a blue growl and then go from there? Sure, it's not a bad idea. I'll throw out growl. With, okay. with the, <clears throat> rib- the ribbons like vines that the okay. chikorita's doing. <laughs> Leo starts drawing based on your, your specs. Yeah, but like don't, don't do any like the bone stuff. There wasn't, there wasn't any of that. <laughs> he kind of goes, yeah, no bones. Sorry, bro. It's just that, that wasn't that was a thing. Big, really big blue. Tell, tell him the colors. Yeah. Hit, hit purple, like a really big purple, like mane from like the back of its. Show, show, head. show Leo the hair. Um, okay. <laughs> just keep getting See, on the like bad that face. Purple <laughs> color. Yeah, like that. Okay, and then it had like these ribbon things that are like, silver, and they kind of just were like flowy around. And he pulls up uh, an image. <clears throat> Uh, CJ, make a history check. Fifteen. Fifteen. Uh, based on what you remember seeing, the the drawing in front of you is pretty close to spot on. Some of the some of the features aren't perfect, but it's pretty close. Yeah, it looks like that. That's what it, that's what I saw. Mm. <laughs> Doctor Lawson just goes. Uh, did it, you know, make any sounds to you? Was it? Did it do anything? <laughs> is yeah. just sees a thing? Did yeah. it make the rain? Um, I, I, I think it was. I don't know for sure. Like, it, it seemed like it, because every it time... It was making lightning. Yeah, the, every time it, like, howled, and it was, like, this weird howl. It wasn't, like, a normal, like, like growl howls or howl howls. It was, like, a it was like a howl, but it sounded like it was underwater, sort of. Yeah, okay. Um, and then every time it did that, there was, like, a crack of lightning. Mm. Thunder. And you think the, the two phenomenons, they are related? Well, it happened a lot of times, and I was following the thunder and lightning to mm. to it. I guess it happened like six times, and I just kept getting closer and closer to where it was coming from, and it led me to it. So I think so, yeah. Okay. This is uh, <clears throat> certainly interesting information, to, to be sure. Um, have you told anyone else about this, you know, the meeting of the, the big creature out in the, the swamp? Uh, why do you ask? Yeah, I'm just curious if you have, you know, shared your story with any of the people who believe in the Rainmaker. No, just just us. Hmm? Well, Dr. Lawson, do you think that <clears throat> there would be anyone here who we should talk to about the Rainmaker? I know that uh, Lillian is a, a big fan of it. Um, Anne-Marie, sometimes, you know, she talk about seeing the Rainmaker in her youth. Um, but she mostly says this to to the children, you know, it's like a, to a, when they ask her why she has the, the shock of white hair, she will say that she saw the Rainmaker. Oh. I mean, I want to talk to her again anyway, so let's, yeah, we'll do that. Also, Dr. Lawson, um, CJ told us that you said that the, the source stones are mm. bad news. My, my friend Morda, um, mm. You didn't get to meet him last time, but he touched what we believe was the fire source stone, and it changed him for a while. He wasn't himself. He was acting really cruel and seemed like he was on steroids, but angry. Yeah, we had a conversation about that. Oh, sorry. I told him about that. I didn't know that. He goes, yeah, the, um, <clears throat> the source stones, what they do is they amplify what is inside. Um, but they also add some new things to it. So the, the strength that he may have experienced from the contact, you know, the unbridled power, it, it changes you when you are, you are given something that makes you stronger. Um, the, the idea that you could be greater than you were, um, you sometimes you forget who you used to be on the way there. Well, also, Dr. Lawson, uh, I sent a piece of the stone to my parents, and my mom, Helen, was able to make this Pokeball out of part of the stone. And I put mortar inside, and he seems to be back to himself, but he, he's also really strong, and he, he's gained some abilities that he didn't have before. Do you want to maybe take a look? 
He's like, I'm. You you broke off a piece of the the source stone. Well, I I didn't. Um, Morda did. I I mean, he grabbed it and he couldn't let go, and we were pulling at him to try and get him off, and he snapped off a little piece, so we took it with us so we could ask people what it was. You managed to crack the source stone. I want to insight how it looks like he's feeling about this information. Go for it. Nice. Um, 19. Interesting. Um, he seems genuinely <coughs> surprised that you were able to break off a piece of the source stone. Is he more surprised about that or that they made it into a ball? He's more surprised at the just fracturing of one of the stones. Okay. Like, the fact that it could be made into a Pokeball is secondary at this point. It probably hasn't hit that yet, but... The fact that you were able to <laughs> take a piece off of one of these things is what he is most surprised at in the current moment. He seems to be lost in thought. Do you know if these source stones have any uh, alteration on nature? Like, do they do anything for, I don't know, I guess the planet? They are... Uh, I get into this a little with uh, with CJ here, but think of, let's say, uh, Monty. Yeah, he is a little bird. Yes. Um, you take away the, his affinity for the darkness. Mm-hmm. Yeah? What is left? A bird. Mm-hmm. So, you take something like Crash. Mm-hmm. You take away the affinity for the water. Mm-hmm. What is he? He's a crocodile. Precisely. So before the source stone's appearance, <coughs> we believe that the life on the planet is very mundane. No, no super crazy powers or abilities mm. from the animal life. Yeah, but then these source stones, they start popping up. Way back in time, who knows how long ago? Millions of years, thousands of years, we don't know for sure. But at some point they appear, they start to alter the course of evolution. Now we have all the, the lovely creatures that we call Pokemon, but you start to think of life without the, the source stones. Mm-hmm. Life is not so quite so magical as it were. So the fact that you are able to crack the, the Firestone, if that is truly what this is, is remarkable. They are known to be indestructible and very difficult to lay eyes on. So do you think... Go ahead. Sorry. Why do you, does anyone know why it only affects certain like biological things? Why aren't we, why don't we have powers? You know, we don't know. It is, um, we are something of an anomaly, it would seem. But perhaps the Pokemon, you know, they are just slightly more easily changed at the genetic levels. I don't know, that is not my specialty. Is it more maybe anything can be affected, it's just a mutation? It's entirely possible. If the stories about the Prime Mind are, are true, then there is no reason you could not come in contact with the Source Stone and gain some new ability at great cost. Mm. So, Dr. Lawson, do you think that the stone breaking might be a sign of something bigger, like a weakness in the stones overall, something bad happening on a, another level? entirely possible. Could be that, or perhaps, you know, mortar is just meant for great things. I don't know. For him to crack the, the elemental crystal, it, it makes sense that it would be the one with which he shares the element, but, you know, I don't know. As far as I am aware, you are the first and only to break off some of this source stone. It's also crazy that your parents were able to like work with it. And that's what I mean. Like, <laughs> what? Yeah. Why is he not shocked by this? <laughs> well, to to Tia's point, like, if he's saying that the source stones were what changed the course of evolution on this planet, and everything used to be like Earth, and there were like animals and plants. And then the source stones came up with different types and elements and mutated 
everything to be Pokemon, but humans presumably were and are unaffected by that. Like, maybe that extends to humans handling said stones. Like, it wouldn't impact them so much as it would Pokemon. I mean, when we were handling the Firestone, it just was hot. Like, it didn't do anything to us. I don't even think it was hot. I think it was just, like, warm to the touch, and then it was, like, heating up if we didn't have it caked in something. Right. So it wasn't, like, it didn't do anything to us. That we know of. Did we you hold the stone in your hands? Did we? I don't remember if we did that. I think so. I, think no, I feel attempt. like we put it in the bag. I know we put it in, like, clay. We touched it to put it in the bag. Yeah, but I thought we, like, got Mortar to let it go into the bag. I don't remember. I don't, I don't remember either. I don't either. Hmm. I, I, th- I think it was just Mortar dropped in the bag, and then remember it started to almost burn, burn through the, the bag, bag, and then we had Sandshrew would cake it in mud. Yeah, and Nubster froze it. And then we mailed it away. We didn't touch it. And there are no ill effects from the the Pokeballs that you have now? No, I mean, it's all been positive. I mean, obviously, when Mortar first touched the stone, he kind of changed. He he wasn't the same friend that I knew, and he, he was acting differently, he was acting strangely. It seemed like he was almost becoming evil and strong, but happy about both of those things. And then when... My parents sent me back the source ball, and I put him in the source ball. He, he seemed to be right back to normal, only like fighting fit, I guess, better in battle, and seemingly his his best self, I guess. So perhaps, and of course, this is just a theory. You are the first one that I know of to break off something like this. Um, you know, perhaps he loses part of himself when he touches the the pillar. And then he breaks it off, he takes that piece, he is missing some of him, you know, and then put him back in the Pokeball, perhaps he is reunited with what he lost. But again, that is entirely conjecture at this point, I don't know. But if you say he is his best self when he comes out of the, the ball made of the, the pillar, perhaps there is a connection there. Do you know anybody that studies this? I don't... I mean, you know a lot, but... I know, um... There's, there's someone who lives in, in New Tree, but I have not met them in, in quite some time. Do you have a name? I have. I was going to say, I have to expect him to say, yeah, there's a guy, Arthur and Xantha, right? Yeah, great. <laughs> <laughs> I, unfortunately, or I don't remember the name. Or it's, what's his name? This, the skinny guy? Spencer. Spencer. <laughs> That's this information about the source stones. <laughs> chilling. <laughs> okay, so New Tree. Yeah, well, perhaps uh, there's someone in Fola, maybe. So Fola is a big place, lots of information flows through there. It's just entirely possible someone will know something. Maybe if we go out to the lake where the water one is, we might see someone... I mean, I still want to locate it. ...studying it, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Or that collector guy? I don't know if I want to do that. Well, I know, but, but, like, obviously these are very precious yeah. stones, and yeah. this <clears throat> person thinks they can buy everything that's special. Well, it's, it's not like the stones have been very apparent, because yeah. Dr. Lawson told CJ that the Psychic Stone and the Dark Stone were in some deep forest north of Greengate. I don't know that anybody would explore up there. It seems pretty remote. Is there a, a normal-type source stone? <laughs> Where normal things happen? <laughs> <laughs> the, before your arrival here, the only three that I knew the existence of and could not even confirm with the psychic and dark stones and the rumors of the water stone nearby. I did not put much stock into those rumors at first, but enough water Pokemon have swam south from there with remarkable abilities. That is an overabundance of evidence that's something I thought impossible. That's crazy. We're pioneers! <laughs> Let's go in the lake. Um, As a human being, I would be super curious to, like, say, put a Pokemon that's not water type with it and see if they get, like, water type attributes. Milo would never do that, though. <laughs> or have that thought. Hey, hint to my team. Screw over one of your guys. See what happens. No, I'm interested. just saying, like, <laughs> like just roundtable discussion. 
Well, I yeah. thought when you started saying that, I thought that you were going to go with a Pokemon that isn't the type so that they could like handle it and like it wouldn't affect them like it did Mortar with presumably the Fire Source Stone. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Not so much like it would change their abilities to be that, but it's like if you grab it with a water Pokemon, maybe it impacts them versus if you did it with anything else. But yeah. it becomes steamed. Either one. I mean, that's <laughs> there's a discussion either way there. I don't, I don't think, I mean, as Milo, I don't think we should engage with any of them. I mean, who knows where you're going to find the water source stone. Like, yeah, I know, but even f- we found the fire one. And I think that was honestly luck. Well, 100%. But, like, <laughs> so much had, we known, <laughs> had we known what we know now and we came across it, it would have been a vastly different Very encounter. True. Very true. We're like licking it. <laughs> hey, let's do science. My tongue's stuck, guys. <laughs> oh boy. So this reverse engineering of Pokeballs, mm. that's mm-hmm. just about the most terrifying thing I've ever heard. And I was curious if that was more rumor or if that was something that the Prime Mind had acted on and actually managed to catch a person. <clears throat> He takes a very deep breath. He says, It was not a rumor. It was very possible. We lost a lot of people. I choose to believe they are still alive somewhere. But, I, and I cannot stress this enough, be very mindful who you broach that subject to. You never know who lost what. The only thing I will say is the champion at the time went into the woods to find the prime mind and the war ended. Oh, damn. That was the last known occurrence of the prime mind and the last known occurrence of the champion. No one knows what happened? No one knows what happened. The champion enters the forest, the psychic and dark types recede and give up the fighting. The champion never returns. <laughs> That's crazy. Who, who That's is, so much worse. Who is the champion? The champion went by the next name of blue. They never came back. There was the Pokemon Champion League at the time. They had beaten every gym challenge. They had faced off against the Laris Pokemon League. They had traveled worldwide to other regions and done the same. There was a world champion. Oh, damn. Oh. <laughs> so, how long ago was this and how many people do you think went missing? Well, the war ended roughly 30 years ago. There are countless missing. Most of them from Xantha and Greengate. That was the closest. But the whole region was affected. more sense as to why Xantha isn't anything anymore. <laughs> Imagine how much different this campaign would have went if we went to Greengate <laughs> from Xantha. For real. Holy shenanigans. Very happy we didn't. I am not. <laughs> what would have happened? That's crazy. Probably would have been bad. Probably would have been bad. <laughs> <laughs> so that would have been probably bad, probably terrible, but so cool, but probably terrible. I mean, I definitely want to go there at some point. But I mean, now we have the context of the knowledge, where if we had we gone there first, it would have been like, why is everyone so sad? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's their fault for not telling us. Yeah. The education system failed us all. <laughs> yeah, it did. <laughs> Glad we came back. Yeah. <laughs> And no. I mean, I don't regret learning more, but also, my God, that there's these I have questions he can't answer, but 
<laughs> That's terrifying. So, yeah. do we want to make the pivot and talk to Lillian about CJ's Rainmaker situation? I think maybe we go to Anne Marie instead. All right. Yeah. Well, I have one more question. Um, Dr. Watson, have you ever heard of anyone trying to, like, seek out the stones, like, overtly? Because you told me you knew about, like, Team Rocket. And it seems like if anybody knew about these, they would seek it out with the intention to use what you're talking about for their own. Advantage. I will follow up. Okay. Um, he seems a bit puzzled um, and says, you know, for many, the, the stones were a theory, okay. a coping mechanism for the war. Clearly, oh. there had to be something that made this Alakazam so strong. Uh-huh. There had to be some reason we failed okay. time and time again. But clearly, there's there is some merit to to their existence. You hold one in your hand. Okay. Mm-hmm. I think the discussion is also, I mean, even if Team Rocket's not, if there's anything left of the Prime Mind and whatever, <clears throat> if they're trying to get them. The Source Stone? Because they already have access to Psychic and Dark. What if they're like building a Pokemon army of multiple types and like getting stones of every type and like right. rebuilding? Yeah. <laughs> Dear God. Because we've already seen, unfortunately, that they can break. Yeah. And there's the threat of like, let's say. Wait, what made you say that Team Rocket already has Psychic and Dark, or is that not? No, no, no. I'm saying you meant the Prime Mind. The Prime Mind. Oh, okay. The Prime Mind could, like, continue building an army. It would be like, sick, look at all these grass-type Pokemon we have. Seek out the grass stone, beef them up, and we're just gonna get Rabbit run over. Pokemon but then on the, on the flip side, let's say the Prime Mind's like, hey, grass-type Pokemon, fight with us, and they defy, and they're like, well, then they break the stone, and then all of them, be, like, lose their abilities. That'd be crazy. If that's possible. From what we know, though, of the fire stone, it was like a vein. We don't even know like how big it was. Yeah. yeah. So. But that's the scary part. Like, if they could mine it, a- a- either side. Yeah. Like, be bad. Woo! <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> so I feel like we're gonna become twenty, and then each of us is gonna become like a sage protector of each stone. <laughs> that's like, what I was gonna I'm say. I'm gonna be like the flying stone, just like. Yeah, like maybe that's what it's gonna come down to, but like do we want like we know where like two of them are Mm -hmm. and have heard of where an additional two of them are. Mm -hmm. I think eventually like it might be on us to find all of them and like elect some person we can trust to defend it. (laughs) Ooh, who do we trust? I don't know. Maybe that's why Remy's here. What if that's already a thing? Oh. Should we ask Remy? I don't know. No? Yeah. I don't the, know. the problem becomes, like, who can you talk to about this? Because you don't want to start disclosing information on where they are. Yeah. Like, in an ideal world, what we would do... I think we at, should... At some point, you go back to Xantha, we meet, meet up with our pal Sandra and maybe some other Pokemon that live there, and be like, hide this really well, and don't let anyone near it. Uh-huh. And then, but this, I think before we go back and do that, like, confirm our suspicions that there's one in the lake. Yeah. And do the same thing. Correct. Correct. But then I think it becomes a thing of the people and the Pokemon have to protect it from both sides. Because if Pokemon are protecting it and other Pokemon come in and like weasel their way in, but they're with the Prime Mind, mm-hmm. then we lose. And vice versa, if people are 
protecting it and like they get overrun by other people i.e team rocket then we lose it so it has to become this like union thing of both people and pokemon that are near it have to protect it this is a very long-term plan right here how do you warn though if if you're being mind controlled how do you know somebody's their pokemon is being there's two you know people, I mean? there's so you many would just layers. trust them you'd be like oh yeah <laughs> This I don't know. Something else. Dr. You're, Lawson, did you live here before the flood happened? No. 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 I came he's after, new. right? He's new. Okay, he's super right. new mm-hmm. to town. He's only been here like a couple months. Mm-hmm. I think maybe we go to these people we've met and see if they know information about the Source Stone. Who? Anne-Marie. Eddie says he's been trying to get to it, but that doesn't necessarily mean he knows where it is. Yeah. So I think we play along and see if it's there. Yeah. Okay. Now that we have Scooby here. I, I think this has to become a thing of not telling anybody about the ones we find. Yeah. Like, if we find it with Eddie, like, that's cool. Well, it doesn't need so thing, So are Eddie. we swearing Dr. Lawson to secrecy? Because we just told him about the fire one. I mean, we're already screwed there, but, I mean, that's four. <laughs> Dr. Lawson, you're the only one we've told. <laughs> Children, to put your hearts at ease, my goals are to help Waterlanga rebuild and to return home. Okay, thank you for your time. <laughs> Do we know where he's from? Where are you from? <laughs> I am from Rothhead. If you ever make your way up north in the next few months, you know, if Waterlanga rebuilds, perhaps you will, we will meet again up there. Okay. I, uh, I have one other dumb housekeeping thing to ask, which is like so lame in the scheme of things. Um, but we were told that... What's your favorite color? <laughs> <laughs> we were, great, great, all right. <laughs> we were told needed, thank you. that um, like it's kind of a journey to complete all of the right of learnings mm-hmm. and something that all the gym leaders do and then they yep. get a tattoo, whatever. Is there, sweet tat. is there anything that we need to do to like signify that we've completed it here? No, the, um, the things that you have learned at each right of learning will ideally guide you through the final tests. Okay. All right, it, well, is, it is worth noting you can attempt this test at any time. There is no rule saying you must go mm-hmm. to all of the right of learnings. But typically most of the people who have taken the test, you know, they, they do that so like, to study. You would administer it here? No, they, they do it at four. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, uh, oh, yeah, yeah. All right. <clears throat> so uh, should we go somewhere else and discuss this for a bit? Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Lawson, for for opening my eyes to the horrors of this world. <laughs> that I thought were over, and now it's like Team Rocket. It's like, okay, get out of here. I don't care. Like, you do stupid, you steal Pokemon. Like, that small time. Get out of here. Nobody cares That's about you. My reaction. The world is ending. <laughs> I'm it's here like, to steal all your points. It's, it's chump change at this point. Like, there's so many brainer things. It's like, can you okay. go back to the, the Wooper house? I thought you wanted to talk to Amory. Yeah. I do, but I think we should have some time to, like, hash this stuff out. Do you, do you guys think that people. we can trust Remy? I, I think that I think that we can. Yeah, of course you do. <laughs> Says his number one fan. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, we at some point, we have to put our trust in adults. I agree. So, you have to trust Captain Gordon. No, just, we don't. Just aside, I, I kind of agree with Bentley on this one, thinking that Remy is someone we can trust. I mean, I trust Remy way more than I trust Captain Fry. Oh, yeah, I don't trust Captain Fry. I just think he's a cool guy. Well, that and he is a lead that if we want to like seek these out and at least know where they are, we would know if it's there. But on the flip side, like we've seen how Remy handles things. We've seen how he's been with Maestro, um, you know, and he seems to to care a lot about the well being of of every everyone here and whatnot. So. I, as far as people in this town, he would be the one I trust the most. I mean, that's why I said I think he might. If that's a, if the Source Stone Guardians is a thing, he'd mm-hmm. be one. I mean, why would he come here? Tight, like, they were already assembled. <laughs> he was this badass battler, and now he just lives in Wadalonga, like Protecting just running a just restaurant. A former like, pro battlers that retire yeah, just show to like the chill like town. God, it's like no, they're so actually sick. just defending these stones. So sick. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, now I want 
don't know who all the Avengers are. <laughs> <laughs> Billy's just kind of a poster of everyone. <laughs> Can you sign this? Be like, I have more. If that's a thing, maybe the one in Xantha's dead, which is why there wasn't an issue when we found part of the source stone. That's accurate. Jesus. Or caught. caught. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, God. Well, that's absolutely freaking terrifying. Do we want to make a pivot towards having a discussion with Remy, or do we want to make a pivot towards both Rainmaker and Marie? To discussion? follow up, though, with Remy, I think we can f find out without getting specific. I, I agree. I think we can tiptoe around. We can be like, oh, we heard this rumor from, or we can go find it and then tell him about it. Mm -hmm. and Either see way, how he reacts, or even just talk about how we're going to go look for it and see how he reacts. What do you think? I like the second idea. Let's let him know that we're gonna maybe look for it with Captain Fry and see how he reacts. And if it's positive or negative, we can maybe gauge. Yeah. But I think we should do both. Do both what? Do that and then talk to Amory about Rainmaker. Okay. You know what else I think is a cool idea that we should totally do right now, but you guys probably are gonna say no to me. What is it? We should four no. away battle right now. <laughs> <laughs> Blow off some steam! I mean, everybody's but like ten, so you might refocus. Have some clarity after. No? I'm down. Just me. <laughs> Chikorita stands beside you and is like... <laughs> Let's out go! The, out the I'm gonna touch the weird leaf thing again. <laughs> <laughs> You're insulting Chikorita's leaf? That was weird. I, don't know. I mean, that's how I described it. I think. It's like a weird, it's leaf. A weird leaf on the top of the head. Weird it's leaf? It like, can move and stuff. It's mm -hmm. like, what is happening there? Yeah, uh, are we doing this? Crash will scream. Ah! I don't really want to. I want to play you. Come on, Milo, blow up some steam. I I want to go and figure yeah. this out. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Let's go fight Hot Gray. Hot Gray. Yeah. <laughs> he was creepy. He's very creepy. With the name Hot Greg. So to Remy. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Or Eddie or Anne Marie. Hot Greg's just Everybody. best. Everybody. Let's do. Let's do Remy, and then we'll go over to Anne Marie because that's where Fry is, right? And if we want to go scope it out, well, he might be there. That's where he was. Okay, but still. All right. Let, let's we go tell Remy. Go. Let's, let's go. go. You guys make your way to the Cajun Crocodile. Yeah. The smell of breakfast wafts through the air. I had some unfinished some business anyway. Mm -hmm. Did you, so you have you have a little buddy with you? Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you guys make your way all the way into the Cajun Krakenau. Uh, yes. Remy is not currently in the building, but Maestro is. Maestro appears to be uh, preparing some degree of breakfast for the staff. Sweet. I'll send out a little buddy and say hi to Maestro. For the staff being other Pokemon, or yeah, there's there's like a there's like a service crew and. Yeah. and yeah, the the whole uh, low tab line serves oh, as uh, nice. waiters in there nice. in exchange for food, of course. Nice. And this is one of their meals. A little long break. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Maestro will give a uh, a deep Ooh. bow to you as you as you all enter. What's up, bro? Hi. Hello. Do you know where Remy is at? He goes. I'm sorry. Kind of points. Thank you. Sleeping. Um. And then have a little buddy run up. And that, do you remember that question I asked you? Mm -hmm. He goes, <laughs> yeah. He, he would point upstairs and say, um, translate. Okay. Okay, let's go upstairs. What's, what, what was that about? You will see. Is okay. Maestro going to come with us or is he still cooking? <clears throat> He's still cooking. All right. I yeah, he goes, he goes back to stirring up with a whisk. He's whisking something up. There's a couple of whoopers that are Never very stopped. curiously walked into the the restaurant just smelling. <laughs> they all waddle up and Maestro urges them to take a seat as you guys uh, take your leave of him. Nice. Do you head upstairs? Yes. Okay. I do. I'll follow. Well, I'm just along for the ride. I'm definitely following Milo. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, you guys can hear the heavy boot-clad steps of Remy as you uh, make your way to the upper landing. 
Um, and he's just closing and, and locking a door and kind of throwing on his rather large coat and straightening his hat as he turns around and sees you all. Goes, hey, kids, how are you? How are you, uh, how are you doing? Um, okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it's the, the day is young. Perhaps yes. it will get better. <laughs> Hopefully. Um, <laughs> real quick. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I asked Maestro a question the other day when I was in the kitchen. Yeah. And uh, he said that he had an answer, but that you would translate it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so what uh, you wish to know, uh, your, your little friend, you know, he has a he has a name before he meets you. Uh-huh. Yeah. Um, Maestro has given him a new name. Oh. Um, and he seemed, he seemed to like it, but it, it's up to you. Um, it's in Maestro's... His own language, sort of, you know, the, the language of the Sneasel, you know. Mm-hmm. But his is kind of a mixture of like Sneasel, a little bit of the Whooper, or some of that low Ted, you know, they all learn <laughs> to communicate, you uh-huh. know. And he called him Arshan, which means brother. Nice. Next How do you spell that? A R J H A N. Just some intense name. J H. Mm-hmm. J H A N. What is it? How do you Arjan. say? Arjan. Arjan. Mm-hmm. Arjan. Arjan. His brother. In uh, in Maestro's tongue, you know, it means brother. Bro. Uh, he does not use that uh, that term often. Oh. Cool. Uh, so it would seem you have a, a a very special little friend there. Yeah. So if we call him Arsh, would it be like bro? Um, it would. It is kind of tricky, you know. The Pokemon language they don't usually abbreviate, you okay. know. They kind of. Arge actually means anus <laughs> that language. Just insult little buddy all the yeah. time. Hey, yeah. Arge! You basically you call him like a barrel of feet. Can I? Oh. Can, can, I want to roll an insight to see yeah. how little buddy slash Arjan is reacting respond. to yeah. all of this with a nine. His his eyes are, are quite starry. Okay. He's, he cool. seems pretty. He seems pretty happy about it. Yeah, I'm cool. Um, and every time uh, they every time the the word is said, he kind of goes. <laughs> nice. <clears throat> he goes, yeah, he's uh, apparently he's a quick learner in the kitchen. Nice. Mm-hmm. Maybe <laughs> perhaps it's the nose, you know? And he kind of pats little buddy on the head. Accurate. Um, should I kick it off here? Mm-hmm. So, yeah. uh, we've been uh, exploring town a little bit. We mm-hmm. met Dr. Lawson and did yeah, some yeah. He's a, training. He's an interesting guy, you know? He's, yeah. He has a lot of um, lot of knowledge behind him, you know. Yeah. For one, not so not so old. Yeah, he knows a lot. Yeah, and then mm-hmm. do you want to touch on your experience at all, or should I just get right to it? What exactly do you mean? Cause it was so I'm talking about the hairs. Oh, like you want me to tell him about that? Yeah. Do you want to? I don't care. Yes, uh, I wasn't gonna keep it a secret. <laughs> do you guys want to? Yeah. Okay, go for it. I'm at the rainmaker. Oh. He goes, oh yeah, what um, what are they like, you know? Uh, it, singular, was a really big dog that had like a purple mane and like silver ribbon tail thing. Goes, hmm. You lay, like, you meet it? Yeah. Like, like you don't just see it, like you... Like I touched it. You touched the rainmaker? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I have, I, yeah, it's it's really cool. Cause you know that is like a once in a lifetime, you know, to meet like a legend. Yeah, that is pretty crazy. It was amazing. Yeah, but um, where did where did you meet it? In the swamp. You went into the swamp. Yeah. Oh yeah, and Chikorita will kind of like poke out from behind. Met her there. He goes. Well, I don't believe we have met because I'm Remy. And she kind of holds out a little vine. And he goes, Oh yeah, of course. It's, it's very nice to meet you. Because yes, yeah, so you go out in the in the swamp, you meet your little friend, and then all of a sudden, you know, he's there. Yeah, I heard it howling, and there were like thunder and lightning. And I just kept following where it sounded like it was coming from, and ran into that. He goes, oh, that is that is interesting. Usually, it does not um, like you know the the thunder, the lightning. You know, usually it's just the rain. Yeah, that's I, I thought it was kind of weird, but it sounded like there may have been something else out there too. Interesting. So you believe in the Rainmaker? Really? Yeah. Yeah, I see. I see no reason not to. You know. Okay. I have seen Stranger Things. You know, Maestro. He comes. He comes. Sure. boating into town. You know. I have seen. I have seen Stranger. 
it's um, so enough people have the same description, you know. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, kind of got this. I don't know if you want to call it a message or mm -hmm. um, some sort of communication from it about um, a really powerful stone, kind of in the water nearby that like powers up water type Pokemon. Make a deception check. Or <laughs> play. Oh, mama! Uh, Thirteen. Thirteen. He goes. He talked to you. Like I'm, with with words. You are all there. No, no. Just we're we're relaying. This is kind of something that CJ learned from being near it. Like, kind of got like flashes of it, like a vision. Okay. So it like. It does no words to you, but you get like, you see like pictures. One, is this when you you make contact, or you just you know he just show you. Yep. <laughs> Go ahead and make another deception. <laughs> <laughs> this or that? Yes, deception. Oh! And goes. Yeah, you know that. I, I, like I imagine it. that would be uh, surprising. He tell you about a um, a stone. You say. Yeah. In like in the <clears> water. <throat> mm -hmm. Did he say where? Like, um, uh, where this is? Not specifically, okay. but we have suspicions and we were going to go look for it. You go to look for it, okay. Uh, I mean, you go to look for like, it's like a big stone, it's a little stone, you say it's underwater? Like, what does it, does, do it tell you what it do? Like, it is just... Well, it, it kind of is like the rainmaker in that it's... <clears throat> Kind of a, a, a legend or a myth, and we've mm -hmm. heard that the, the fishermen and some of the people around town think it's there, but nobody really knows. And uh, we met this uh, guy, Captain Fry. Don't oh, know. Oh yeah, I know him. He yeah. he come around every once in a while, you know. Apparently, he's been looking for it for a while, and we were maybe thinking we could also look for it and help him out. But it was, yeah, I mean, if you don't get seasick, you know, being on the the river boat a few days might be a, might be a fun adventure for you. Um, you know, I, I hear about the, uh, the stone only once before, but, you know, if you go to, to look for it, you know, I hope you find it. I hope it's good. I hope it's cool. Like, what did you make hear for, about like, it? a story. Uh, you know, the, the guy I tell you about, you know, he comes to town, he, he wants to buy everything. The collector? Mm -hmm. oh. Yeah, he bring up, uh, he looking for some kind of treasure at the bottom of the lake. You know, he mentioned, like, stones. Gems, you know. He think uh, he think the the lost <coughs> civilization, you know, that think they have some kind of big yeah. treasure down there. He's using his resources to find these. What if he's a captured human sent to I find I don't them? know, but he's a so creep. Wait, wait, shut up. We'll talk about it later. I'm scared to reveal things. <laughs> yeah, you guess saying this out loud. <laughs> no, I'm like whispering intensely to one another. Yeah, you know it is. Um, that is really cool. I'm happy for you to meet the to meet the legend. You know, it gives you images. Maybe you are, maybe it's like destiny. You know, maybe you are you and the uh, crash here. Maybe you're supposed to go find this this treasure at the bottom of the lake. That's a good point. I feel really good about it. I think we're gonna find it. Yeah, I feel like you know if you you meet a you meet an actual legend and I say you know you should go do this thing. Maybe that is destiny knocking at your door. Very true. I didn't think about it like that. So Remy. You Think it'd be a good idea for us to go with Captain Fry? You, you trust Captain Fry? You know, I don't, I would not say I trust him, but uh -oh. he will get you there. But, you know, it might be safer, you know, you maybe, maybe rent a boat or, or just walk, but, you know, you know, Captain Fry, he has, he has a nice boat, but he's, he's, he can be dangerous. Dangerous in what way? Uh, he like to. Uh, he, he's a risk taker, you know. He, he spends a lot of money, you know, he makes all these trips out, he looks for this thing, he never find it, he gets desperate, you know, he start. I've said too much. <laughs> he does also have two Kingdra. He does have two Kingdra. <laughs> That's pretty freaking badass. <laughs> <laughs> it all comes circling back to the badassery. <laughs> I mean, danger. I mean, he's if really he's a cool pinch, he's not gonna, It's not like he's not gonna be able to defend himself. <laughs> Should we go? Should we ask him about the war? Did we uh, ask can, him I wanna, I'm just all over. I'm so suspicious today. I just want to see if he's like really looking that happy and carefree about it. I'm just kidding. 
<laughs> natural one. Natural one. You're up, I would have tried. I need to finish that sentence. I, um, I mean, he doesn't seem like on edge or anything, but he's a particularly jovial person by nature. Okay. Like every every interaction you've had with him is similar to this one. Not in context of what you're saying, but yeah. in the way he says it. Where Where is the lake in relation to the Cajun Croconaw? Like, Almost straight north. to the north. You just take the river north. Okay. And then it opens up to big old lake. Remy, how old are you? Because <laughs> why everybody always come to town? They want to know how old I am. <laughs> how old do you think I am? <laughs> <clears throat> See, I, you know, I have uh, I have been around for a while. You know, he he kind of like tips his hat off, and he's he's got some some gray at the at the edges of the hair. He goes, I have been at this for you know a long time. You know, retired a couple of years ago. But to answer your question, I am forty. <laughs> <laughs> because I just kidding, I'm that sensitive. I'm 46. Okay. I have been around for a good long time. <laughs> Live a nice, happy life, you know. I know I'm Angeline for a long time, you know. She's she's a good friend, you know. Just like uh, you and Crash, you know, your your time. We okay. have been like that for a long time. Very cool. Mm-hmm. Do you miss battling at all? You know, I had this moment. But you know, I have I have been there, have done that. You know, I don't have uh, I have I have no more to prove to myself or others. You know, in my youth, I am very, very much um, out to prove something. Mm-hmm. Now I'm just out awesome. for you know the people around me, live for the friends. You know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right, Remy. Well, we're probably gonna. Head to the river or the lake, but mm-hmm. want at least you to know where we're headed in case we don't come oh, back. Sure. So we tried happens. that last time. Yeah. It didn't work in our favor. What? We told Arthur we were going into the mine and well, he us at sundown. Remy seems <laughs> a little done. more reliable than Arthur. Bentley, write down on your character sheet a Pasho berry. Um, well, it's not five grand, but it's close. Milo. Right on yours, a yachi berry. Y- how, yachi. How does one spell yachi? Your dad's favorite uh, game. Y a c h e. Very good. Um, yachi. <laughs> for C J, you get a wakan berry, uh, and then for Phoebe, the five grand. Uh, Thank you. <laughs> a, a pat on the back and a good luck. No, you get. Wow. Um, <laughs> All right. That was for what did I do? Did I insult you at some point, Remy? No, you get a Rindo berry. R I N D O. R sorry. R I N D O. Can I do a history check? Do I know what this is? Uh, he will. He'll just tell you. Oh. Um, he hands he hands you whoever probably to C J at this point. <laughs> um, he hands you a basket um, with four berries in it. He says, I have, a, I have a little gift for you guys, you know. Uh, he'll probably run into his river grab it. He hasn't just been holding his basket the whole time. Um, <laughs> just awkwardly? Yeah, just like, hello. Um, but he will, he will hand it to you, um, and he will say, um, I have, if you are really going to uh, travel with, with or without uh, Captain Fry, you're going to the lake, you know. There are a lot of very strong Pokemon up there. Um, I want you to take something with you, each of you. Um, it should... Should keep you safe, okay? So he will say the Pasho Berry mm-hmm. uh, reduces the incoming damage from a super effective water type move. Oh. Um, the Wakan Berry reduces the effectiveness of a super effective electric type move. Um, the Yachi Berry reduces the effectiveness of an incoming super effective ice type move. And the Rindo Berry. Reduces the effectiveness of an incoming, super effective grass type move. It says, um, I, I picked these uh, with my straw the other day. Um, when we see, you know, the, the partners you come to town with, um, feel free to, you know, exchange them among each other. You know, do what you need to do. Um, but if your if your reflexes are quick, you know, you find yourself in a tricky spot. Um, try to throw these to your to your partner. You know, it might. Um, might turn the tide for you, you know? Is it a one-time use thing? It's a one-time use thing. Think of it like, um, like, a, like a, safety, a safety net, you know? Do you know if there are seeds in them? So after they eat them, can we 
get seeds? Uh, there are seeds in them. Um, After they, they pull them out. <laughs> he goes, you know, if if you really eat them in, in a kind of a pinch, you know, they, you would probably eat the seeds. Um, if you remove the seeds beforehand, though, you know, there's so no reason you couldn't potentially regrow these. That's what I'm thinking. How long does the effect last, you know? Uh, it, is, it is like a one-time thing. Um, so Maestro tell me um, when uh, when he make his way down the river, you know, he see a, he see a lot of things. Um, he, he has these berries with him, you know, and every time the wild Pokemon, you know, they get interested, he's, you know, he smells good. He have all the things with him, he has food. Uh, they try to attack him. Uh, he used these berries in different ways to kind of help fend them off. Hmm. He is not one for fighting, he is more for defense and, you know, running away. Hmm. Cool. Thanks. Yeah, of course. Did you grow these? No, no, we find them in the, uh, out in the, in the swamp. Hmm. Okay. Are you going to start find more? Yeah, I was curious if, smell them. if we could just like sacrifice these to like start growing more, get the seeds from them. Or have an upster <laughs> try to search them out. How dare you jettison my gift! <laughs> How Where are the, the seeds? Take? Find the seeds! <laughs> Just kidding. Let's, Let's go, go to Anne Marie. Okay. Okay. Both you, there. Guys, you guys take your leave with your gifts? Yeah. Okay. Bye, thank you! Good luck, kids. Let me know if you find the, uh, you know... Merci! At the, at the bottom of the lake. <laughs> Thanks for me. Thanks for the berry. Mm-hmm. Let's use them. Use them wisely, or you know, put them in a, a nice dish. They might taste good. Au revoir. So Wait, nice. Nice. Mm-hmm. You know a different language. <laughs> <laughs> it's just something I heard. It. She speaks shuffle. What? <laughs> you make your way there, un- unperturbed by man or Pokemon alike. There are a few low tad that kind of <laughs> skitter in the river beneath your feet. Ooh. Skitter in the river. Um, yeah, you guys. Fear way better. You make your way back to the yeah. open air market that is Anne Marie's shop. <clears throat> I would like to look around this shop and see if. Secret uh, hatch? I'm looking for. <laughs> like, I want to see if there's a camera or anything. That could like record images. Okay. We're being like followed. Of us? <laughs> no, no, no. Bolos? Like if I could buy like a camera to take. Oh, well, well, I took it a very different direction. Yeah, I did as favorite. well We're until you watched. started talking again. Okay. Yeah, I want to see if there's a, like a camera I could buy with which to take photos. Well, per the rules that I have written for this shop, make your perception check. 18. 18? There just so happens to be. <gasps> A camera on one of the shelves. What? It's got a crack in the lens. Oh. Um, but one of the whoopers is kind of just walking nearby. It's it's white floor sign whooper. And nice. he's kind of perched nearby. He sees you eyeing and he goes, whoo! Um, and the, the whooper with the mop kind of runs by, kind of cleans up, and you can see there's a little bit of uh, a spill right in front of the, the camera. Kind of just start mopping it up. Impressive because it doesn't have any arms. But. Yeah. He's crazy. He works yeah. with his neck. Yeah. yeah. He's a good job. Um, he tries. Where is, is Anne-Marie, are you around? <laughs> Why'd you say that like an English? Anne-Marie! <laughs> Anne-Marie! <laughs> She's suddenly right behind you. Oh. oh my lady! She was, yes? Oh, hi. Um, oh, I would like crazy. to purchase this camera. Where'd she come from? Okay. Yeah. Why are you so weird? I'm sophisticated right now. Milo has these moments where he just becomes sophisticated Milo and yeah. talks like a weirdo. Yeah, what's happening? I would like to purchase a cup. This is what adults it's, do it's, when they haggle in a shop. I'm great. trying to be it's an adult. So funny. She goes, <laughs> Yeah, well, um, You have to haggle. You want to buy yeah. the camera? Yes. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> she goes, okay, um, you know, the the base price, you know, is 59, and do you have the, do you have the money? I do, but I happen to notice there's a pretty hefty crack in the lens. There's a crack in the lens? Yeah, that kind of, that kind of diminishes its value quite a bit, I would think. <laughs> puts a crack in my wallet. She goes, I like you. Make a persuasion check. Damn, where'd you learn that word? Four. <laughs> She goes, you know, you're a, uh, you're a smart shopper. What's your persuasion, man? 
Negative one. Negative one? <laughs> yeah. Never mind. <laughs> she goes, That's why it was a four. She goes, uh, Tell you what. For you, because there's a little crack in the lens, you know, you bring me the, the Zenta ball, mm-hmm. you know, you provide me the means to make a little bit of money, mm-hmm. perhaps make up the loss from this. I will sell it to you for 53. Henry, do you have other lenses that we could buy here? As a matter of fact, I do. You're welcome. I'll be over here. <laughs> uh, do you know how much, how, how many uh, <clears throat> photos it can take? Like how much film is in it? It was, I'm certain I have not checked. <laughs> hmm. Can I see if there's film in it at all? Why, why are you making it a film camera? Just make it a digital camera. Then it's you have a, a digital it, camera. It was always a film camera. Damn it. <laughs> not a digital camera. Yeah, can I check to see if okay. there's at least film in it? Yeah, make an investigation check. Oh, 12. That's so close. So, it looks to be on a 30 shot roll of, of film. Okay. Um, of which there are 23 remaining. Okay. That's not bad. Pictures on it. That's interesting yeah. to me. Yeah. Yeah. I want to know what the seven pictures are that are on it already. Right. That's worth the purchase there. <laughs> um, I mean, it's literally all of my money. So Is it really? I have $65 and she's charging me 53 I will go down to $12. I'll throw money at you. I don't care. It's because literally just add you. Can we, can, we, can we group huddle for a sec? So... I was kind of thinking this might be helpful if we start finding these to like start photographing where they are if we need to like reference where these where they are. So if there's more evidence of where these things are. Pretty much, yeah. Okay. But what if people get the photos who shouldn't have the photos? Yeah. Well, I mean, you have to get them like developed and all that stuff, but. <laughs> That's gonna be a fun. Adventure. We're gonna we're gonna be undermined by the dude who works at Walgreens. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry, man. There's still coffee on your. Just sorry, man. Definitely don't want to have your pictures, but oh, I need to go to the lake real quick. I mean, I mean, Overexpose every single I'm not, run. I'm not saying take photos of them, but like where they are. So like, if we take a photo of the lake or like where it is on the lake, kind of, we can have a better idea to go back and do it. Or like, even so, say the mine, like a specific picture that would help us get there without getting lost but isn't exactly a photo of it you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. makes sense or we can just take photos with like the gym leader when we all get our badge and <laughs> give me a kodak moment and i'll spend 52 dollars we got that b-roll I don't, I don't think there's any drawback to having a camera i'm not sure if i'm super on board with the taking pictures of or near Source stones, if we find them, but I mean, I'm happy to spot you some some cash. What do you think? Um, I mean, it might be helpful to have a camera, even if there's just stuff. Like if if it were to be me that ran into the rainmaker, I could take a photo of yeah. it or something. Yeah. Or you could take a picture of Kaz, yeah. assuming uh-huh. we have to battle him again, and yeah. then we can show it to adults yeah. that can actually do something about it. Like, hey, here's the photographic <laughs> proof yeah. for you to stop being an ass. Okay, well, I'm going to buy it. Because we have a deal. We have a deal. And the, the whooper with the, <laughs> the mop kind of like leans it up, and then just kind of inches his way up onto the shelf. Kind of edges it over so that it's... Close enough to the edge that you can grab it. And Marie will pocket the monies. Ask her to throw in a new lens. It's only fair. (laughs) Uh, Would you be able to replace this lens for me so that I could have a functional camera? The the camera would function. Yeah, but it's not going to take good photos, which is the point of the camera. Ruthless. As we've mentioned before, we do have the lenses. Can you show me the lenses? She goes, uh, Cooper, will you take them to the lenses? And he goes, whoop! And he kind of like hops down the, the shelf, walks over to the end of the aisle, and just keeps whooping until you, until you catch up to him. And he'll walk you over to where the lenses are. 
There are three, of which one is sized to fit your camera. <gasps> it's meant to be. And Cooper just, he goes, whoo! And uh, one of the other whoopers kind of flicks a little sign up and says $12. Wow. Oh. <laughs> that is wow. rude. <laughs> it's just a brutal coincidence. But yeah. Wow. She I rolled it in advance of the prices. <laughs> That's amazing. I love that. <laughs> it's a brutal coincidence, but it's $12. But a man. coincidence nonetheless. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Screw it. I rolled how much it would be when I rolled if it would exist. And there was just gotta beat the gym leader here. Yeah, clearly. So. All right, Amory, can I have that lens, please? <laughs> the Wooper will so defeat it. We'll flick it down to you and uh, collect your. Can I? Can I like have a trade-in value for this one? If you said it still functions. It's, like it's broken. <laughs> it still functions. No, oh, it's broken. Oh know. my god. It's broken. I don't want that. It's trash. I'd love to buy this for you. I might hand you fifteen bucks. Thanks. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. I get to use a camera. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'll give you three, and I don't even want to use the camera. <laughs> three dollars? I'm a ground level investor. <laughs> I'm I get at least two pictures off every one. But actually, I'm giving you three dollars. Oh, thank you. That wasn't a, uh, um, my actual wallet. Good. Just gonna pay you. I'm gonna. Oh, I just have a fat like pile of money in my backpack. It's just underneath it's, it's everything. Tied up it's tied really It's crumpled bills. <laughs> yeah. And once we leave, yeah, it's not clean. Right. To come out. I don't look and see if she has any books. Um. No, you roll. I, I love how both of y'all do that. I want to look. To, it's like, just wait and then establish what you're doing. Um, you look around for a bit. There are currently no books inside. Uh, Alright. And I, <sighs> Um, do you know of any of the river merchants here or that would maybe sell books or is there a city nearby that perhaps has a, a decent library? Uh, you know Fola, the, the uh, capital, you go uh, north, uh, they, have a, they have a huge library, oh. it's very big. Um, I know, I have not seen him in several days, he make uh, he makes his, his journeys up there, but D'Antonio, you know, he... D'Antonio. It's impossible, and that he might, uh, Gotcha. You know? Is something. D'Antonio a pirate? <laughs> she goes, I wouldn't call him that to his face, but, you know. So, yeah. He's never been convicted of, of stealing. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I want to look for, um... The dread pirate D'Antonio. I want to look to see if there's any, uh, like, legit fishing line and or reels. Emery's shop seems to be the room of requirement, guys. <laughs> Not really. There was no books. <laughs> well, there was no books. Sad roll for you. Uh, there is a very small selection of fishing gear. It appears as though your friend Fisk has that market pretty well cornered. Okay. But there is, like, some very basic stuff. There's some boots, hooks, Okay. No, I was specifically looking for like fishing line and reels since those were like kind of the two factors that I didn't mm -hmm. upgrade with Fisk, but it doesn't sound like there's much, so it's okay. Um, I'm assuming there's nothing here, and you're probably going to say Fola again, but if I fill up this camera and I want the film developed, do you know where I could get it done? Actually, let me for $18, I tell know. you. <laughs> It's an actual one. She goes, I, I don't know. I'm sorry. Okay. Well, I'll just assume Fola at that point. Fola. We're going to do this last time, but we're here now, and I'm remembering. You bought the two Watalonga balls. You want to give me one, and I'll give you a Pokeball? Ball. It's like, eh, no. But they work so hard to get them. My... Let me tell you my plan mm -hmm. is to take these to the next town and trade them for three and just go around and like keep building. Yeah. Okay, but if we're in a situation where we're out on the water and I <laughs> happen to catch or could potentially catch a water type Pokemon, would we? Would you do that? I, we could. We can discuss. Because my, my my goal is to like build up this trove of these rare Pokeballs, and then if we ever are in a safe place like Fola or Olivia, sell them to people. You're such an entrepreneur. Um, I still have a Xanthaball, by the way, because my attempts at getting your 
two for one steel deal failed miserably. Yeah. Supply. When I was thinking about that, when that failed, and I was like, man, if we swapped and then I just got like a complete set of the world and then sold it to some guy for a bunch of money. The, the collector. collector. Crazy. Yeah, the collector. Henry. Mm-hmm. Do you have any more water on the balls? I don't want it already. Huh? He probably has each. Does he have three? I have a. I have three. You have three? Mm-hmm. Um, how much? You wish to buy? Potentially. There's 30. 30 each? Jesus. That's some nonsense. Where'd you find them? He goes, uh, the, the riverboat merchants. They get them from under the water? No, they are imported. They all <laughs> come from Fola? Yeah. Fola most, makes water along the Most holes. things come from Fola. We used to make them here. We need to go yeah. to Fola. Yeah, the flood you used comes. to, right? And then they have to so stand, so stands to reason. Now it's all made there. <laughs> stands to reason that there might, our jobs. Might, our might be some under the water, down in like the city. I suppose it's possible. Perfect. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna find some. I don't need your fancy, rich Wadalonga balls. <laughs> I don't need your balls. <laughs> I don't need without your balls. I don't want your balls. Blimey. Can we see Captain Fry? Wait, um, make an investigation. At the sound of balls, he comes running inside. Hello, kids! <laughs> Wait. <laughs> I was gonna ask Anne Marie, if, has, have you seen Captain Fry around? Uh, not since uh, yesterday. Mm-hmm. No, but I've eaten um, some fries. He was talking about, um, you know, taking some big, <clears throat> some big journey, but I don't think he has left yet. Oh, he's still in town somewhere? Mm-hmm. I imagine he is on his boat. Do you, do you see his boat from here? <laughs> do you see his boat from here? Well, I mean, you know what his boat is. I don't remember which one boat is his. Bentley went on his yeah, boat Yeah, Bentley went on the boat. What does the boat look like? Do you remember where his boat I went on the boat? Yeah, you were just poking around in his it's stuff. On his crate. He had, like, crates of stuff. and He, went he, he was like, hey, boat. what are you doing? I was he never on the he boat. boat. I was looking at the stuff in the boat, and then he tapped me on the shoulder yeah, and he scared me. Boat. Do boat. you see that boat again? Do I see the boat again? Yeah, do you? On the boat, but no. Mm. What's your perception? It's three. It's ten. You don't see it, but you are it's certain of what it looked like, so you know that it is not within eyesight. Okay. Don't see it. Hey, Anne Marie. We. Oui? Do you like Eddie? Like that? I'm just thinking um, that. She goes, in what way? Oh! Like a boyfriend way. Of course not. What way do you like him in? Professionally. He brings uh, many good things to sell. Oh, okay. You're very pretty. Thank you. How did you get that streak in your hair? She goes, come close. Oh, okay. (laughs) What do you know of the ring? Things are getting spicy. Um, what I've heard from other people, and I may or may not have met it. Playa! She's fascinated. We got an Anakin Skywalker situation going on here. Just, <laughs> you say you met him? Yeah, I think, I think so, based on what I've heard. Mm. Sounds similar. Because I met him as well. Did you? Mm-hmm. That is how I get the great street. Oh, wow. Mm-hmm. Where did you meet it? Out of this swamp. That's that's where I met him. What, okay. what did it look like? <laughs> oh, it was a magnificent blue creature. The flowing purple mane. The silvery ribbons on the side. That's the exact same thing I saw. This is amazing. Did you touch it? No, of course not. I did. You would not let me get close. You touched it? I touched him. What did it feel like? A water like this. <clears throat> um, yeah, I have a couple, couple of his hairs. You want to look? Her eyes get very wide. Here, see, like that mane. She goes, "I would love to touch it, but I cannot promise I will not keep it." Oh, okay, Jesus. then you're not gonna touch it. <laughs> um, I would sell it to you though. You would. One hair. Yeah. You're, you're being genuine. One of the hairs. One of the hairs? Yeah. She goes, I have, um, <clears throat> have a vested interest in, in getting one of the hairs of the Rainmaker. 
How vested is that interest? You had to put a number <laughs> on that word vested. <laughs> Name me a price. What do you think it would be worth? <laughs> she goes, What is it worth to you? <clears throat> First rule of negotiating always overshoot the target. A <laughs> hundred thou. Seven thousand dollars. Whoa. She doesn't flinch. I meant ten. I said seven, but I meant ten. Ten dollars? No, ten thousand. Oh. I was like, that dropped drastically. <laughs> seven thousand dollars. She doesn't flinch. Ten dollars. <laughs> I'm intimidated. Ten dollars. Don't hurt me. She goes, tell you a young one. You get another handful of those hairs, you will have your 10,000. What? Oh, shit. I okay. I gonna come across You give me enough to, to work with? To I'll work with? More. What do you mean by work with? Like, you're gonna make something out of it? Mm-hmm. What do you, what would you make? My plants are my own. But you bring me the hair, you will have your money. Okay. Uh, Sounds great. Now we're pirates. Great. <laughs> That's cool. I don't think we should go find it and rip yeah, out more hairs. I agree with that. Subject. I didn't rip out hairs. I, I'm just saying. <laughs> I don't think we should seek out this thing to rip out hairs. I'm happy to lose my eyesight if I get ten thousand dollars. <laughs> <laughs> so you're saying, CJ? I think you should. Each of your eyes right. is worth five grand. <laughs> that seems about right. She goes. Are they for sale? My eyes. They are beautiful. Oh. <laughs> hey, must have the minority report all of a sudden. <laughs> Thanks, Anne Marie. Sell one of them, get an eye patch. Yeah. If I said I wanted five hundred dollars for one of the hairs, would you do that? Five hundred for a hair? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Um. Oh no! 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 What? No! <laughs> what are you doing? No! <laughs> Yeah, that's why I did it. No! <laughs> Are you serious? That's exactly why I did it. Because it's funny. It would make me at exactly $666. You're funny. You're funny. <laughs> it's so bad. It's hilarious. I don't like it. The karma is not good. The that's, karma's really that's, not that's good. That's why I'm doing it. Oh my god. <laughs> did you do it? It's a curse. Oh. I'm gonna pull the badge kit back out and I'm gonna look at them. Mm -hmm. um, they look the same. Mm -hmm. They're three hairs of equal length. You only have three? Mm -hmm. Oh. I don't think you had like a fistful. No. Mm -hmm. There's like three little strands. Would you, you guys think this is a bad idea? I have no idea. What am I gonna do with hair? I don't know. What's well, she what if it, with it? Yeah. I don't know, but she wants what it. What if it does something? What if it like gave you the hairs for a reason? Like I would be. And you're just like selling it. That, and I would be scared if she had a way to like track it and like did something to it. Do you say that out loud? <gasps> oh, mama. How about yeah? How about you roll to see if you heard? Oh, shit. Well, that was the question. Yeah. Did you say it out loud and did she hear you? Yeah. Okay. She maintains her composure. But has I, not looked away from CJ. Can I like look at her and try to see inside it up? Yeah. Mm -hmm. What her what intentions are? Um, just yeah, like Unnatural how she's reacting to having like heard that and, yeah, and doesn't, this whole <clears throat> doesn't flinch is like dead set on she will right now five hundred dollars for one of the hairs. I don't trust her. She's, she's too. I think that's an insane amount of money for one hair. Yeah. Like, what are you going to do with it? I don't know. But why do I care? I have two more. Yeah. Am I going to be able to do something with three that I can't with two? Yeah, braid. If she turns out to be a character we can't trust, we're super oh, screwed. Fine. Why? We're it's a hair. Yeah, but she knows that you have three. If she's so willing to buy one for 500 and wanted more for 10 grand, she's going to club you over the head and steal everything you own. But I, I feel like that's a jump. Do you say that, Ella? 
He didn't say it as No, well. I'm not Are saying that. Sure? Or, uh, he's yes. thinking this to himself. I have an accent for a reason. But he hasn't said shit to me since I All that came out was Dick Snay on the Harry. Yeah. Uh, there's, uh, <laughs> I see Captain Fry's boat. We'll come back later. Oh, is he? Okay. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, maybe later. Sorry, uh, Anne-Marie. She goes to the Elfers tent. Awesome. And we all just walk out. Yep. yep. CJ, make a perception check. Real fast. Speed walk. <laughs> Natural one. Jesus. Yes. Yeah. You guys you guys leave the shop. Uh, you, you very narrowly um, avoid tripping over uh, wet floor sign whooper who's walking behind you. <laughs> as you walk away and he goes, whoop, whoop, whoop. And you're oh, like, ah. you almost trip on him to make your way out of the shop. Sorry, bro. Are we outside the shop and outside of sight? Are you trying to be stealthy? Yeah. Outside of your shop? Stealth checks all around. No, I just want to not. I want to make yeah. sure we're at a point where just she can't away. see us. Yeah, but in order to know if she can see you, I need to know how sneaky you are. Okay. Nineteen yes. from Bentley. Wow. She's a whooper following us. Eighteen. Eighteen. I'm looking out for a whooper. We're making stealth checks right yeah, now. Yeah. Okay. So I was I was an eleven. Eleven. Okay. Do I have to make checks for Chikorita and Crash? Was Phoebe a natural one? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Cool. Uh, no, you, not necessarily. Because I didn't really do that great. Yeah. She, Chikorita and Crash probably were just playing around outside the shop. Fair enough. Looks like. No, and Crash, she's probably swimming in the river. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Cool. Yeah, you guys make your way outside the shop. Okay. Can you check to make sure they're still there? My hairs? Yes. I looked at them. I put them in my bag. Can you just do me Okay. Do me a kindness? And I pull out my case mm-hmm. and I open it. All three are still there? So okay. Is that Thank you. Did you think she stole them or something? Maybe. We were all there. Yeah, but maybe when like you were falling in the whooper. <laughs> I don't know, dude. I don't know. I'm Fair just enough. You rolled a natural one leaving, so... <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> Worth checking. I'm going to take my bag off and put them, like, underneath stuff in my bag. Okay. <clears throat> um, I just... I don't know. That's so much money to pay for something like that. Like, that's... I could have William hold them. Here's and, what I thought. And to the point that Phoebe made, if, you know, the Rainmaker didn't let anyone else touch it yeah. but you. Well, we don't know that. But she didn't, it didn't let her touch him. True. Yeah. But well, maybe she didn't try it. And we can go Lillian ask Lillian. didn't touch it. Made a blind I mean, for all we know. Also, I wasn't affected by it the way these women were, so I don't know what that means. That's why I'm saying maybe there's a reason why. And that's why you have them. Possibly. Who knows what that is, though? CJ would rather have $500 than be the chosen one. Right now, yeah. Five hundred dollars can buy a lot of things. I feel like she would have gone way higher than five hundred. Than 500. But he's like, "Oh, it would be hilarious! I'll have six, six, six. Oh no! Ask for a thousand at least. Jeez. Yeah. If she That's, was gonna go ten grand for a whole friggin' fistful of it, I'm fully on board with that plan now. Like, I'm, I'm way cool. down to go in the swamp and try to find this thing again. If I'm the chosen one, I'll find it again. That's. But your intentions now are to steal its hair for yeah. profit. That's yeah. not necessarily true. And if I am the chosen one, why would I? Why would I do that? I, so, see, I wouldn't I'm think you are one. anymore. <laughs> there it is. Uh, anyway, should we find the captain now? Ad. Yeah, I don't think we should tell anyone else about these hairs. Maybe Lillian. Yeah, that I just weird. told a lot of people. Yeah, I mean, you can tell him you saw it, but you don't have to be like, I have its hair. Hear me out. Should we give them to someone else right now so that if you are to be mugged and or kidnapped to get the hairs from you, you won't have them anymore? I no. think William's a good candidate. No. I'm getting like a Jurassic Park 3. No. We could Flash split the hairs. No. Let's split hairs. No. What happens if they catch you with them? No. What happens if they catch us without them? These are my hairs. If somebody takes me for my hairs, I'll die for these hairs. In the middle of the night, <laughs> William just exchange just goes, William hairs for them. Because <laughs> he's holding a handful of CJ's hair. He's going to replace your hairs with those. Yeah, bro, that's so weird. He's going to thread it through your scalp. He just looks at you and as you ask, he just. 
<laughs> Six on the head. Um, yeah, I'm going to look fun. around for nearby boats, either Fry or... Um, Antonio. Should, Antonio. I, should I do it? Sure. Why should do it. Because you said that I know exactly what the boat looks like, so do it. presumably I could. For for Fry or D'Antonio? Eleven. Eleven. Oh. Uh, you see several vessels, one of which appears to be Captain Fry's. I'll look for D'Antonio's boat with a natural 20. Um, you don't know what D'Antonio's boat looks yeah, like, nor what right. D'Antonio looks like. Yeah. You see a shit, it's a shit that says D'Antonio. <laughs> you see an awful <laughs> lot of, of ships in the in the river, um, but you're not really sure what you're looking for. Yeah, merchant boats. Yeah, there's there's a lot of merchant boats out there. Dang! But, okay. None yeah, that are just like, my name is D'Antonio. Do you guys want boat. to go with Welcome Brian on this adventure? I 100% do. Um... Okay. I'm, I could be persuaded either way. I, I don't have see any. If it's there, and then like probably prevent him from trying to take it if it is. Yeah, but even if he doesn't try to take it, and like his Kingdra get like mortared. Yeah. Then we're all we know, screwed. Well, but we'll know it's there. <laughs> I don't have any reason in my mind not to go on the trip. That was the I most think... Lord Farquaad thing you've ever said. <laughs> we... Some of you may die. <laughs> <laughs> That's a risk I'm willing to take. <laughs> I, we glean something other than just like not knowing, and then yeah. he goes anyway. Well, yeah. sorry, your friends died. I'm not, I'm not saying like I'm not saying like Fry would betray us, but his Pokemon might. Pour one out for the uh... I'm not worried about it. I. Uh, you're never worried about it. I think at the very least we should tell Captain Fry it's that it's not anything okay. to be trifled with. It seems like it's really dangerous. We saw what happened in the yeah. water. Let's yeah. do that and then go from there. Okay, sounds good. I mean, I don't want to go on the trip anymore to find the source stone. Like, I want to know where it is so we can know where it is. But yeah. Yeah, I want but to if go we down don't, there. Like, yeah, if we confirm that it's, it's there, there yeah, and then we know. Yeah. And maybe fight some cool water type Pokemon. And then, and then swim up and be like, didn't find anything or like find some treasure at the bottom and go, oh, maybe it was this. You know what? Bye-bye. Didn't Captain Cap- Fry! <coughs> Didn't Cap- Captain Fry? Captain Fry talked about when he tried to go on his many attempts, one of his many attempts to get down there, that there was something really big that was down there. Maybe there's something already like watching it that's touched it. Oh, there's a And it's possessed. Yeah, it's, it's, it's possessive. Yeah. It's my precious. That would be great news. Very <laughs> possessive. But I, that's a, we can confirm, and then we yeah. know there's something down yes. there that's already that's like yeah. territorial, yes. territorial, and it's like stay away from my stone. That's like best case scenario. Stay away from my stone. <laughs> it's my stone. Get out, mess <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. Let's. This yeah. is turned into Shrek Five. Do it again, Bentley. Bentley calls for Captain Fry. Oh, um, and a very groggy and potentially hungover uh, Captain Fry staggers onto the deck of his boat. Um, he's half put on a shirt. He just goes, eh. Oh. Hello, my friends. Um, you are... You're here so early in the morning. It's not that early. <laughs> it's, it's like noon. <laughs> he's like... <laughs> Well, what the... <clears throat> what brings you screaming to my door? We are here. So is his boat just like on the on the riverbank? Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. It's moored. We are here to join on the adventure for the treasure at the bottom of the lake. Oh, yeah. You know, the, the treasure at the bottom of the lake. I forgot we... We discussed this. Yes. We got scuba gear. I do. I got a snorkel. I do. But, uh, Captain Fry, we, we did want to relay some information to you. Uh, some people said that going after that stone is super dangerous and maybe not the best thing for Pokemon to, to go after. That is what uh, people that know the value of something will tell you when they don't want you to take it. That makes sense. We've yeah. warned him. Let's go. <laughs> that makes sense. Let's go. Ready to, uh, I'm ready for tragic death of Eddie Fry. <laughs> yeah, you're ready to set sail. Yes. What if this is how me, we all die? Give me about a moment. <laughs> kind of turns around and he grabs a jug on the way back. Pops an Advil. Oh, oh, takes oh. another hair of the dog. <laughs> can Eddie, can, Eddie, Eddie said, can I have some of that? He goes, <laughs> um, sure. Here you go. And he hands you the 
the joke. I'm a joke. <laughs> what? <laughs> Why? We're about to go after a stone. <laughs> Wasn't necessarily gonna drink it. Yeah, I can understand. Yeah. yeah and then the joke falls and, and shatters, and he just goes, "Why can't you do this?" Because we need to be here and there loose was it. water. Oh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> now I need another. Joke. Why did he smell it like that? I, you know, I have a lot of drugs on the ship. I need to make sure you're so not repulsed by the water. <laughs> It's not my preferred drink. I drink swamp water, it's fine. It's not my preferred drink. Uh, (laughs) One of these days. (laughs) Because, anyway, um, uh, yeah, we're here. We can be ready to to set sail very soon. Cool. I'm super thirsty, and I'm going to have to have Crash throw up in my mouth. I mean, you're used to it, but now. <laughs> All right, so are we getting on the boat? What's, what's Crash's con? On? His con? Mm-hmm. Uh, plus two. Yeah. He uh, he kind of stomps around a little bit on the on the boat, and a little bit of the water current starts to push you on the boat, kind of out towards the center of the river. As <laughs> Crash just stood there, he's kind of like swishing his tail back and forth. You can see the current in the water is very much intense. What? That's pretty cool. And there's a little bit of water swirling about his feet. Got an earth bender. We got a water bender. Uh, oh. We're chilling. Uh, with with Crash's help, uh, <laughs> Captain Fry is able to get the vessel underway. He he unfurls the the sail, and the uh, the two Kingdra at the front of the boat begin to propel the vessel forward. As the Kingdra's crown makes its way north on the river. Ooh, that's cool. Is this spelled with a K for the alliteration? Or? No, that's okay. stupid. <laughs> Sorry, that was needlessly reductive. Um, With the wind filling their sails, our heroes prepare for a journey on the river. What might they discover beneath the surface? <laughs>